Hey everyone, it's Andrew Brown. In this uh, video, I want to show you uh, where you can get uh, the exam guide and uh, other additional information so you can understand where I'm getting this stuff and make sense of it yourself. And you might hear my space heater here. I have the tiny space heater uh, to keep my feet warm and my hands warm. So sorry if the background noise picks up, but let's go take a look. So the way you can get to this is you just type in gh.io forward slash certifications. Love the short link, by the way. And I mean, they have stuff down here below, but what you really got to do is go to register and then connect your account and it'll do something with GitHub and then you'll see this stuff here, okay? Now, I wanna point out that um, they have an FAQ down below. Uh, I guess they have a candidate handbook, which is something. I'm not even sure if I open that up. Mm. This is more about like how to run stuff. Yeah. Okay, not really useful, but um, what we're looking for is the exam guides. Okay, so if we were to go into the foundations, which is, this is the certification we're focused on, you can see the price here. It says you pass with the exam of 82%. Hooray, I actually can see my score now. I didn't know where that was. You can't see it. I'm trying to move my head here. Not sure why uh, it's not letting me do that. There we go. And so I actually got an 82%, which is pretty good considering I thought I flubbed a bunch of questions, but that's pretty good. Remember, there is no study course or practice exams before I took this. Um, so that's great, but they really should tell us the, the non-passing score. So if we go down below to FAQ, okay, and we look up passing score, since there are multiple versions of the certification exam, the passing score can have minor variances depending on which version you take. To ensure the integrity of your exams, to avoid confusion on why there is a small variance, will not provide you a specific total score. And I mean, I think that's kind of a failure of uh, any kind of certification program. I think that would be very frustrating for the person taking the exam, not knowing what the score is. But again, I passed it, so I'm just telling you, like you will pass it, but understand that they're just not gonna tell you what it is, at least not at this time. So that's one thing that uh, I found uh, stood out there. But let's go back over to here and we have the learning path, which is on Microsoft Learn. They might have some content that, um, that gets covered a little bit differently here. I found it not to be uh, very good, but there was some stuff about like enterprise um, that I don't really go much more into detail where they're talking about like bringing in identities. It might be this. Right, so again, I didn't, I didn't look at this until afterwards. So yeah, I don't really go this full top into this. Um, I do like UFA, but um, you know, you might want to top off in that one section here. But the rest, I don't know about the rest. <laughs> like in terms of quality, it's, it's not, uh, it's not there. Um, so let's go into the study guide, and we'll just open that up. Okay, and we have our domains. So we have our seven domains. And if we go and scroll on down, we can see they have Git and GitHub Basics. So they have like a little bit about the expect you know about Git, like commit and branching. Um, I made sure to include other things like what is remote. Uh, I don't know, I have a big list of it. It's in the, uh, we have a, uh, a Git and GitHub quick and dirty crash course to get you through all that stuff. We have uh, GitHub ident identities. So understanding the different types of accounts, GitHub Markdown. What's unusual is like, they talk about GitHub Markdown, but they don't talk about GitHub flavored Markdown. Really odd, they have a Markdown section, but not that. GitHub flavored Markdown is amazing, by the way. You have GitHub Desktop, you have GitHub Mobile, um, coming down here, all about how to work with GitHub repos, um, how to work with issues, how to work with pull requests, how to work with discussions, how to work with notifications, I don't know if I even got a question on notifications on my exam. Uh, GIS, wikis, and GitHub pages, nothing on GitHub pages. I'm surprised they didn't promote that a bit more. I really like GitHub pages. We have GitHub Actions. Um, in this, for GitHub Actions, you know, you need to know a little bit about the syntax of the file because I was getting very specific questions about that. Um, Copilot, so we have Copilot, we have Code Spaces. I actually was surprised how little there was on code spaces, but I do do a very thorough cho uh, job of covering code spaces with us because we need to utilize it to be effective. Uh, and so we get a lot more knowledge in that than expected. We have uh, GitHub projects. Um, it's weird because they say GitHub projects, but it's really project management. So like labels and milestones aren't specific to GitHub projects. So I kind of broke that up into a different area there. 
And there were some other things that were project specific that um, um, that I uh, that I had to put in here and things that I didn't. What's weird about GitHub projects is they need, they want you to know very specific things. Like they want you to know um, the types of built-in workflows, right? The types of, of charts. And that kind of threw me off because they seem so trivial to know, but they asked you in the exam, so I was surprised. This thing is not specific to GitHub projects. I'm not sure why they put it in there. Um, but anyway, in this, this as well, so yeah, I'm not sure why these are in here or even create template repos. These, all these here shouldn't be in this section, but they are. Uh, we have privacy, private, privacy, security administration. So we have a few here uh, for uh, security. Then we have GitHub administration. I might call it administrator. I'm not sure why, but I might have messed that up. This is supposed to be about like the management of your repo. I actually covered a lot of it in the GitHub repo section. So I end up repeating the content a little bit. We have the benefits of the GitHub community. So knowing what sponsors is, what is open source, what is GitHub's relationship with open source, um, inner source, and there you go. So yeah, I would say that again, it's not a hard exam. Um, and I really make sure that you're super prepared for it. Just make sure you do do uh, uh, some practice exams just so you don't get caught off and lose some points on that factoidal information. But there you go, okay?